Hi, I'm Lima Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at MIDI clip programming. So, versus recording a, a live performance of MIDI information into clips in arrangement or session view, another way we can go about um, putting information into our software, Ableton Live, is called programming, which is where you're basically inputting the information manually in a non real time sense. So, you're actually kind of just checking where you want these things to be on the, uh, the actual uh, editor. So I'm going to start with a drum beat. I've got a 909 loaded in already. And we're going to do this in session view because I want to just vibe and, and loop around the idea that I'm going to work on. So in order to get started, first I need to generate an empty MIDI clip. So if I just double click within the actual uh, the clip slot in session view, it generates an empty MIDI clip, which if I press the play button on the clip, launches that clip, and then it will sequence and loop around the, uh, the area of focus. Now, it's a one bar idea at this stage. If we want to change that, we can go into the length section of the MIDI clip editor and change that to two bars and four bars and so on. However, I'm going to do like a four to the floor bass drum bass drum beat and add some additional layers that will vary over one, two, three or four bars. So the beginning or the backbone of the entire beat will only be one bar. It will be a kick that just repeats the same every bar. So rather than thinking I'm going to create four bars at the end of what I'm doing. I'm going to focus on one bar first, and then as I want to add different changes from one bar to the next, then expand and, and actually duplicate that loop to be a bit, bit longer. So um, let's, let's set that back to one bar there. Um, and then programming, basically we have two key ways of inputting what we're doing. We have the actual the pointer tool, where if we double click in an empty uh, space on the grid, it enters a note for us. Or the other option is, if I just press undo, so command and Z, is if we press control or right click to bring up the, um, the functions menu, if I go to draw mode, which as you see to the right of it has a B next to it, so the B key can do this as well, we toggle between a pencil mode and then the actual the, the pointer mode where we can double click and enter these things. So with the pencil mode, I'm just going to draw in a kick on every beat of this bar. And if we press play, we'll hear that. And then I'm going to think about adding some extra elements to this. So I'm going to accent the second and the fourth beat with a clap. Now, if I want to hear these notes as I'm inputting them, there is actually a preview uh, button here, the MIDI editor preview button. And as I enter the sound, I'll hear the sound. And interestingly, when I move the sound around, so if I go press the B key to go back to the pointer, it auditions the sound that is currently being triggered within the actual MIDI clip. So I'm just going to press backspace to get rid of that additional uh, MIDI note that I put in there. So at the moment I've got a kick and I've got a clap accent in the second and the fourth beat. Now, typically of this kind of slower pace house genre, you may get a little bit of feel by moving these kind of events around a little bit so they're not perfectly hitting at the same time. So this allows us to start using the arrow keys or the mouse pointer to move our, our notes around. If I highlight those two notes, let me just turn the MIDI editor preview off there so we don't hear those. Um, I can move these around on a grid. And if I hold down the command key, I can go off the grid, momentarily turning off the snap to grid function. And I can place that in a slightly different place. So I want this to be slightly ahead of those second and fourth beats of the bar. Now another option is, if I undo that, put it back on the grid, is the arrows, once a note's highlighted, allow you to move to the grid and move your events around. Now if I hold command while I do that, do the same thing and just slightly move these things forwards or backwards in time. So if we do that, while we're listening to this, you'll hear the effect it has on the actual beat. So a slight bit of timing difference and just gives you a little bit of a, a feel to the actual uh, the drum pattern. Now I want a hi-hat, so I'm just going to use the audition part of the piano roll here. Just turn on the old MIDI editor preview there. This is especially useful if you don't have a MIDI controller to preview the sounds. You can just preview without entering notes for them just by clicking around the actual keys. So I want the hi-hat. I'm going to zoom in here, so I'm just going to use the the drag down zoom function here. And let's go into that hi-hat. 
and we use a different function to do this. So I have my first offbeat hi-hat entered there. It's, it's halfway between the measure of, of each beat. So you'll hear it immediately. You get that offbeat kind of lift to the, to ry the rhythm there. So I can use the pointer and hold the Alt key and drag to duplicate and position my, my second copy of that sound. Uh, or if I want to stay away from using the mouse and I just want to use the actual uh, key commands, I can use the command D function, which is duplicate. So if I do command and D, that note is generated to the side of the original note that I've done a duplicate of. And as we've learned already, I can use the arrow keys to maneuver these parts around. So if I press the space bar, that's the backbone of a main kind of house beat happening there. So if we um, want to create some alternate sections to our song that we're going to generate, we might want to duplicate, so the same kind of functionality, duplicate the MIDI clip itself rather than the content within the MIDI clip. So for clarity's sake, I'll use the menu, but we can use the command and D function again. I'm going to control click there and go to duplicate. And that will make a copy of that MIDI clip and place it underneath. So either we can modify the one that's playing right now, or we might name that. So if we control click and do rename, let's call this our original beat, and press play on the, the new copy, and call this our new beat. So now I have two different, potentially different versions of my drum beat to work with. So I'm going to do a really simple trick. I'm just going to change my closed hi-hat to be an open hi-hat. So in this case, we can use the arrows again. Um, but first, we need to highlight all those uh, hi-hats so we can move them to the, the, the correct sound we want to trigger for the second copy. So if I control and drag, I can highlight just those notes. Or usefully, if I actually click the piano note, that also highlights everything in that particular row. And now, because they're highlighted, the key commands, or the arrows, will allow me to move to my open hi-hat. So now I have two very dynamically different drum rhythms happening now. So um, the other thing that I wanted to do using the same kind of functionality just to embed that is to get an acid type of sound. So let's go to our live browser and go to Acid and see what pops up in our... our uh, instrument section. I'm just going to drag that to the next available MIDI track. So the same again, I want to make a MIDI clip to begin with. Now in this instance, what I'm going to do is, as I was pointing to with the drum tracks, when you start with one bar, you might want to extend that and extend it as you add more layers. I'll do this with the acid bass. So I'm just going to use the pencil tool, so B, and I'm just going to draw in a row of notes. Now in this case, I want my acid uh, bass line to actually last longer than one bar, because otherwise it will be quite repetitive if it just does its melodic pattern and repeats so quickly. So there's a duplicate loop button I can press here, which will extend my idea, so it's doubled it. So now I have two bars that I'm working with. Um, I think I'll stay with that for now, just to keep things quite swift in terms of programming this. Um, I'm going to go out of my pencil tool, and let's highlight all those notes, and we're going to move them up and down. So we could do this with the drums, although it would move between sounds. This time, because I'm working with an instrument rather than a drum uh, rack, which is a drum machine, um, I can actually move the pitch of the same sound up and down. So as I move up and down now, that is moving at a semitone at a time, so one interval. And then if I hold the shift key, it will move an octave at a time. So the same is moving between this space on the keyboard and this space on the keyboard. And the main reason why I'm doing that is to make sure that the notes are playing this instrument in the correct, what we call register, of our musical pitch. There's no point playing a bass too high because it has no bass to shake the room at that point. So if I press play on that clip now, and just adjust the volume just to get things a little bit more balanced, uh, the next thing we're going to do is use our key commands to be able to move the notes up and down to create a bit of a melodic pattern. So I'll just uh, drag the actual ruler section of our piano roll here just so I can see what's going on a little bit better. And then what we can do 
is if I hold Alt, once I've highlighted one note, I can move between all the other notes. And while this is running, I'm just going to start modifying. I don't know which note yet. I'm going to listen and audition as I go and just start editing what's going on here. Okay, so I quite like the pattern of that, the, like the accents that are happening with the different pitches and, and the, the rhythm's quite unpredictable, so it's, it's adding a new um, sort of uh, depth to what I'm working on. Um, but it doesn't quite sound right for the sound that's there right now. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just highlight all those notes. So click into the actual MIDI editor area, press Command and A, and then as it's running, I'll just turn the MIDI editor preview off here so we don't hear the movements of the notes as I'm editing it. I'm gonna just play around with which pitch overall this best suits, this particular sound and the existing drum beat that I've got running. Okay, so that's working for now. I've got a, a running pattern running alongside a drum beat. So we've done MIDI programming. So we haven't used a MIDI controller and played things in the more human sense of playing an instrument. We've relied solely on the fact that we can either use the actual MIDI editor for drum racks and program what drum sounds we want and when we want them to be within our MIDI clip. And then we've also looked at various different ways of navigating the editing function of an existing idea, either using the mouse, the draw mode tool, the pointer, and then the arrow keys to be able to move things around as we listen to these things as they loop.